Hello, denizens of the internet. Well, <laughs> I watched the Apple event and I did live commentary with it and it was so awful and boring that I ditched it and I've decided to just do this summary video of the one thing that interests me. I didn't care about the iPhone or the you know, the, the, the iPad stuff, I mean, really, I, or the Apple TV Plus. I'm not talking about it because I'm not going to be padding this video with useless stuff just to, you know, get it to get past the eight minute advertising threshold. I, I'm, I'm just interested in the Mac, Macs and very interesting. So they're called the Mac Studio. It's two different flavors, one based on the uh, M1 Max chip, and then the new one that's based on the doubling up of the M1 Max chip called the M1 Ultra. So I guess Apple is sticking with the M1 name. Maybe they've copyrighted it and everything else is going to be you know, the M1 something, the M1 Eagle, the M1 Turbo. Maybe they'll come up with a ultra light. I don't know, like, like a beer. But it was, it's a very interesting product. Uh, clearly, Apple is, is dipping into its design aesthetic, going back to the famous G4 Cube, which was a beautiful computer that was unfortunately underpowered and overheated and cracked the Lucite case that it was in. Then, of course, its uh, Frankenstein offspring would have been the uh, track and, Trash and Tosh back in 20, uh, 2013, uh, which was a very bad idea didn't work and now they've they've come up with a new trash and tosh an all-in-one little box it's about the three three times the size of an, uh, a mac mini but half of which is taken up with cooling but it, it looks substantial it looks good and because they're putting in the apple silicon technology um, they probably aren't going to run into the same upgrading issues that they had with the uh, the trash and tosh and they've put ports in the front. Yes, Apple has put ports in the front of a desktop computer. Hell has frozen over, or at least that's the one way they're keeping things cool. Uh, I'm very impressed with the pricing. I'm impressed with the features. Now, obviously, uh, we're going to have to wait for other people to test the Ultra and find out just what its performance is. But uh, if the performance is matches all those worthless graphs that Apple is famous for during its presentations, ooh, ooh look at that, look at that, look at it. it's in the little dots, and it's only 50% more, and it's 80% more, and it's 133% less, and it's, I, I find those graphs, graphs um, worthless. But, you know, the fact is that uh, they're selling a 20 core, 20-core CPU, 48-core GPU, 32-core neural engine, which is now a thing that they're, they're you know, providing core information uh, for, because no one else in the industry is offering neural engines. Uh, th this thing, uh, the base price for the Ultra is 4000 bucks US, which doesn't sound that bad. And then if you add the monitor, which is another $2,000, oh, $1,400, $1,500, uh, unless you get the swivel up and down Juby stand, which is an extra $400, not $1,000, which I'm sure everybody is going to be commenting on. Uh, you know, so then that's, uh, you know, $7,000, uh, no, uh, $6,000-ish, or five, no, seven, $7,000-ish. And um, my, my, uh, my cheese grater Mac, from 2006 cost me $7,000 with monitor. So uh, the amount of power, uh, what an upgrade this is compared to the computer that I bought back in 2006. I mean, it's going to be extraordinary. I'm looking forward to what the tests are. But what caught me by surprise, and I think is really, really interesting, is that they've repackaged the um, the um, Power Mac, PowerBook with the Max chip into a, uh, its own little box, and it starts at $2,000. So that seems to be a pretty darn good deal there. Now, uh, in, in Apple's usual uh, uh, penny-pinching ways, they only give you a 512 gigabyte SSD storage. That should be one terabyte minimum. And on the Ultra, they start with uh, one terabyte storage, and that really should be two. 
I mean, that's a professional, well, they're both professional devices, but Apple is being parsimonious with their SSDs. And of course, the cost of upgrading them is stupidly expensive, but that's where they get you. But this isn't, uh, either of these are bad. So I'm not going to go through the features, let other people go through the features. I'm just interested in where, where do these um, fit? Now, let's, let's start off with the Max. It's a screenless MacBook Pro. So it's $2,000 for a 10 core, 20, 20, 10 core CPU, 24 core GPU, and a 16 core neural engine. So the equivalent of that on the, let's say the 14 inch, we don't, we don't need anything more. We don't need the 16 inch because we're like ripping off the, the monitor. So uh, the, the base uh, MacBook Pro, we don't want the Pro, we want the Max. Okay, so the base Max, if we upgrade the MacBook Pro 14 inch, uh, is 10 core CPU, 24 core GPU, 16 core neural engine. So that is exactly the same as this one. Okay, so we're in the same ballpark. So that comes to $3,100. Uh, and it comes with... Uh, what's the one terabyte SSD? So you get a little bit more. So well, let's let's upgrade the this thing. We're going to select it, and we're going to upgrade this to the uh, one terabyte SSD. And so this comes to twenty two hundred dollars. This. Mac Studio. So if you already have a monitor, you're basically, well, not basically, you're getting exactly the same kind of power, uh, but with better cooling than the MacBook Pro. And the MacBook Pro is $3,100. The Mac Studio configured the same way, I believe configured the same way, for uh, $2,200. So almost a thousand dollar savings. Go get yourself a really fantastic monitor. Uh, this looks like an amazing deal. I mean, a deal within the construct, the matrix that is Apple. This is so confusing. So you've got the M1 Max, and if you want to put 32, can you add 32 on here? Yeah, okay, so that adds $200 here, and that takes that up to uh, $3,300. I'm, I'm confusing things. So that add, so that's uh, $2,400. So again, you're saving $900. But the way Apple has done this, uh, that you can upgrade the Max model to Ultra. Why didn't they just leave this off? This is so bizarre. They, they had a very clear differentiation between call the one column let's just go back here we have the the max version and the ultra version why did they add ultra upgrade versions there maybe they figured that while you're there they'll suck you in with with ultra so no here it is here's just the <laughs> two extra ultra skews why'd they do that i have no idea although it starts with 64 gig. And now is this a better deal? I don't know. I'm not going to spend any time right now trying to figure out which is the better deal. But uh, let's compare our Ultra, our Ultra version with the Mac Pro. Now, I think there's going to be an awful lot of Mac Pro owners who are going to be crying, especially the ones who have, who have configured their boxes up to $30,000. <laughs> I think in in Canada you can get them configured up to fifty thousand Canadian <laughs> dollars. Wow, yeah, which is just a couple of Phillips on our in our gas these days. Gas is very expensive. So let's do now the comparison between the Mac Studio and the Mac Pro. So here we have the Mac Pro. Now it's going to be it's not going to be apples and apples, so to speak apples and oranges, because they don't have uh, exact one-to-one -one, uh, features as it relates to cores, RAM, things like that. So the base studio um, version is 20 core and 48 core GPU. So we'll go here on the Customize Your Mac Pro, which starts at $6,000 already. So it's eight core. We don't really have a 24, 20, 
20 core, but uh, Apple, I guess, insists that their 20 core is more powerful than the 24 core. So I'm just going to click on that. It also makes for a worse comparison, which is, which is fun. So we've got the 20 core CPU and then which GPU do I pick? So it, it, uh, oh, uh, Ram, standard Ram is, uh, what does it say? Standard RAM is 64 gigs. So let's configure that out. So this does not come with 64 gigs. So we're just going to add 48 gig. Um, and let's see now storage. This one has come standard with 512 gig SSD storage. So we're going to have to up this by where's the, where's the SSD? Okay, no, that's all RAM. One of the big differences, obviously, with the Mac Pro is that you can put a shit ton of RAM in there. So there's going to be some use cases out there that are, are, you know, are going to require just volumes of RAM. So there is use for the Mac Pro, but I, I'm not comparing it that way. I just want a really decent um, audio and tel uh, video editing system. So I don't know, uh, Radeon Pro, but I don't know what the equivalent is. I have no idea what the equivalent is. So I'm going to put a Radeon Pro 5700X here. So this comes to $12,700. And the equivalent here is, uh, sorry, $4,000. $12,700 to $4,000. Did I make any mistakes there? I, I don't really care. So uh, you think this is a real tech channel? No, this is my tech channel. I do what I goddamn want to do. So I don't know anybody in their right mind who is just doing Logic or Final Cut Pro editing that's going to be uh, buying a Mac Pro. The, the, the sales of this, if they haven't, if the sales of the Mac Pro already haven't fallen off the um, fallen off the edge of the cliff, they certainly are now. Uh, although I'm sure you can buy the $700 wheels from the Mac Pro and put it on the Mac Studio. So that would be really cool. I'd love to see a Mac Studio rolling around with the with the seven hundred dollar wheels. I'm not going to talk about the monitors. That looks really interesting. Of course, the swivelly monitor, the one that allows you to raise and lower the monitor um, and push it back and forth, uh, that's four hundred dollars more uh, than the just the standard one. Uh, why Apple doesn't include it, I don't know, but that's. That's Apple. I, I don't think it's particularly useful to have a monitor that just goes back and forth and tilts, but it, it also has ports at the back. So a lot of hell is freezing over. So that's it. That's all I'm going to talk about. It looks like these are good deals and I might just pick one of them up. It just depends on which one is going to serve me the best. I think even the M1 Max is faster than my Hackintosh here. And maybe, uh, you know, it's finally the end of hackintoshing so till next time denizens be seeing you thank you for watching <music>